morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality, and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Our phone number, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up right off the website, click on the Join the Team link for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, be in business for yourself, earn thank you checks, associated with having your own business, make your own hours, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, you can do that. Click on the join the team link for a one-time $25 fee. You can be part of the bright side Ben team and join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Also want to remind you to check out our true skin health products at truthtreatments.com. That's truth treatments.com our truth biomimetic mineral mess truth retinol products truth tra- transdermal c serum and truth transdermal c balm and our peppermint sal cleanser and honey hyaluronic cleanser are all up at truth treatments.com truth treatments.com okay welcome back to the bright side got lines open for you 844-236-6010 we'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour as we always do in the bright side i want to continue talking about stomach acid for better or worse, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or heartburn, often get treated as stomach acid issues. They're really not stomach acid issues at the root level. Of course, stomach acids involve that yucky feeling that you get in your chest or uh, in your mouth. If it goes up to your goes up into your mouth, I've had that more than once. It's awful. You want to regard it as a food issue. You want to regard it not as an acid issue, but as a food issue. The most important consideration when dealing with GERD, G-E-R-D, is its relationship to overall digestive health and food choices. These are the root causes of this condition, this acid splashback condition. Just read a paper today, by the way, on um, cannabinoids. We talked yesterday uh, to Sanjeev Javi about our uh, about the longevity's new cannabinoid products. Where is I reading this? The role of cannabinoids on esophageal function. Isn't that interesting? Turns out that endocannabinoids and cannabinoids in general, like the kind that you get in the new hemp FX products from longevity, have a, a quieting effect on digestive activities. They stabilize digestive activities, and they can be helpful if you're dealing with GERD, not in a, at a causal level, but more at a symptomatic level. Anyway, from a causal level, you want to think food choices. And this is where FODMAPS comes in. Food choices, uh, when I talk about food choices, I'm talking about foods that are uh, problematic, not necessarily so-called good food, bad foods, just generally problematic foods. I don't like that good food, bad food idea because you can have problems with asparagus. You can have problems with pears. You can have problems with onions. You can have problems with garlic. These are all so-called good foods, but they are rich sources of fermentable sugars. That's the key right there. 
fermentable sugars. The most important consideration when dealing with GERD or heartburn is food choices. And the most important consideration when it comes to food choices are these fermentable sugars. Number one on the list of GERD causing, of GERD causes, GERD causing foods and GERD causes are these fermentable sugars. Carbohydrates that ferment readily. It's the fermentation that's the problem. And some foods ferment more readily than others. This is where the whole FODMAPS idea comes from. F-O-D-M-A-P-S. FODMAPS stands for fermentable sugars. No, not really. It stands for fermentable oligo, di, monosaccharides, and polyols. It's so much simpler to think of fermentable carbohydrates, fermentable sugars. That's what you want to be looking at if you are dealing with GERD or you're dealing with heartburn. Yes, it's true. You can... Uh, get on your Nexium or Prilosec, and that's what's probably going to happen if you go to the doctor and you complain about it. You'll get on, or even not, if you, now it's all over the counter. You don't even need to go to the doctor. But you're not going to be solving the problem of this dysbiosis, and even worse, you're going to be shutting down your body's ability to absorb nutrients. That's the really big problem with these PPI drugs, with all drugs that suppress digestive activity, all drugs that shut down acid production pharmacologically, are going to be problematic in the long run, period. You don't need to read the, you know, you'll get every six months or every year, there'll be another study or another article that says, oh, Nexium and PPIs are associated with kidney disease. Oh, Nexium and PPI, uh, PPI drugs, proton pump inhibitors, that is. These types of acid suppressing drugs are associated with dementia or they're associated with osteoporosis. You don't need a study. You just need to understand how the body works. If you shut down acid production, you will not absorb vitamin B12. And that alone is going to cause further health problems and shorten your longevity. That alone. But you're not going to absorb other B vitamins effectively. You're not going to absorb uh, or be able to break down proteins as effectively and activate, activate enzymes as effectively. That can lead to autoimmune problems. I mean, it's just endless, the things that can go wrong once you start playing with the digestive system pharmacologically. No drugs are good, but the, because the digestive system is so fundamental, once you start to pharmacologically suppress digestive activity, every single thing you can name is possible. Every single health challenge you can name is possible upstream or downstream, I should say. The digestive system is upstream of all health challenges. And if you start monkeying with it pharmacologically, you are playing with fire. If you have heartburn or GERD, think FODMAPs. Think fermentable sugars. This is uh, the whole relationship between SIBO, SIBO. You don't need a diagnosis of SIBO. You don't need to have a, some doctor test you for SIBO. If you have gas or bloating after you eat certain foods, if you have heartburn, any digestive health issue, that's one of the first things you want to think about is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO. And that's because of this whole relationship between uh, FODMAPs, fermentable sugars, GERD, SIBO, and further problems downstream from the digestive system, including in the pancreas and in the intestine and in the liver and in the gallbladder. You guys who are thinking about having a gallbladder taken out or you're having gallbladder pain, first thing to think about is probiotics, not removing this very important organ. If your doctor doesn't tell you about intestinal health and the relationship between intestinal health and also stomach health because of that, and the gallbladder, he's not doing you a service. He's doing you a disservice. So the FODMAPS foods, these are the fermentable sugars, are largely the fruits, although vegetables too. That's the main sources of FODMAPS, mushy fruits and mushy vegetables. Apples, pears, beets, asparagus, squash, corn is a biggie, huge, because we eat corn everywhere. If you have an issue with corn, Guess what? When you eat chicken, chances are pretty good you're eating corn. When you eat uh, beef, chances are pretty good you're getting corn. At least you're getting some of the fractions of corn. You might not be getting the sugars. Those are processed, but you're getting the peptides. If you're gluten intolerant, guess what? You could be gluten intolerant to chicken. You could be gluten intolerant. You could be gluten intolerant. You could be reacting to the foods that the beef, the, the cows and the chicken and the, and the beef and, and the meat animals are eating. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return after this. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we have no calls as of now, so now's the time to get on board at uh, 844-236-6010, especially if we've left you on hold in the past. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the bright side, please go to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Our skin health products are all at truthtreatments.com. By the way, I'll be doing a talk on uh, acne for you folks in the Denver area. We'll be, we'll be doing a talk at my lab. I did one last month. I'm trying to do them once a month, or maybe we're, hopefully we'll get to twice a month. Uh, at my lab, we'll talk skin care. We'll talk some longevity. So if you're in the Denver area, 11 a.m. next Saturday, the 29th, uh, at uh, my facility at 2240 Curtis Street. And uh, why don't you send me an email? Send an email to ben at ksco.com. If you're in the Denver area, you want more information, put your phone number in your email. We'll be doing that this, uh, this com- not uh, not uh, this coming Saturday, but the Saturday, the 29th. <coughs> Excuse me. I, and then uh, if you're in Pittsburgh, I'll be doing a talk tomorrow in uh, Hermitage, Pennsylvania, actually. And you might want to get on the on the longevity Facebook page and check that out. I'm not sure the details of that. If you're in the Hermitage, Pennsylvania area, that'll be tomorrow. And I'm not even sure when I'm going on, but it's a, it's a general super Saturday. That's what I love about longevity. All the longevity of, uh, uh, affiliates or distributors, I should say, um, are aware that growing a business is about spreading the word. Growing the business is about sharing information. Growing the business is about value, upping people's game in, the, in not just in nutrition, but also just in life. And so if you're part of the longevity family, you know about these things called Super Saturdays, which are done uh, around the country. And they're all about making people better. It's, you don't even have to be part of the business to benefit. You get uh, speakers on self-help and speakers on mind power and speakers on sales and speakers on business and speakers on health like myself. And this is part of what longevity is about. Part of what longevity is about is upping your game, making you better at what you do, making it better at how you live your life and what you do to live your life. Anyway, that's my little two cents about longevity. If you're in Pittsburgh or in Hermitage tomorrow, I'd love to see you. And if you're in the Denver area, we'd love to see you at the lab on 929, September 29th, Saturday, 11 a.m. All right, so talking, uh, we're talking about heartburn, GERD, SIBO, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Eat a bunch of raisins and see what happens. If you eat a bunch of raisins and you get gassy or bloaty or your autoimmune symptoms flare up or any, you have any kind of symptoms, chances are you're dealing with SIBO. That's a challenge. It's called a challenge test. Eat a bunch of tomatoes. Eat a bunch of bread. And by the way, this whole idea of SIBO is why I don't really pay a lot of attention to gluten-free. You could be gluten-free. You'd be eating your gluten-free bread. And the fructose in the bread, and there, yes, there's fructose in bread, fructans in bread. And there's FODMAPs foods in bread. Uh, your, uh, your gluten-free bread could be causing SIBO via this, this, uh, uh, this FODMAPs mechanism. So you can't just go by gluten-free. That's why I always say you've got to do a food diary. You've got to eat foods and jot down how you feel. You've got you to keep track. You've got to chart your digestive symptomology. It's not just about gluten. And any healthcare professional who just talks about gluten is doing their patients a disservice. Because you think, uh, you know, oh, I'm a, I just eat organic vegetables. I'm a vegan, but I break out all the time. Well, listen, if you are breaking out, especially with one of these kinds of uh, rashes that's all over your face, and I've seen some, some really dramatic stuff, in uh, 35 years, you've probably seen it too. If you see carpet-like lesions, which is like where the the zits are carpeting the entire face, I don't care if you're gluten-free. I don't care what you're eating. You're eating something because that's a reaction where there's smoke, there's fire. You can't say, well, uh, there's smoke, but it can't be a fire because I have a a smoke. I have uh, asbestos or I, I protected my house from fire. It doesn't matter. There's smoke. That means there's fire. Just logic tells you that. So if you got a, if you're breaking out all over your face, you got a carpet like lesion all over your face. I don't care if you're gluten free or whatever. It's something you're eating. And like I say, you could be eating just chicken, but the gluten could be in the chicken, or whatever. the The FODMAPs food could be in the chicken, 
uh, you know, chickens are not vegetarians, by the way. So when you see these, these eggs from vegetarian chickens, that's not what, how eggs are supposed to be constructed inside the chicken. The chicken's supposed to be eating everything, especially worms. Anyway, so this, the FODMAPs thing has to be addressed. Where there's smoke, there's fire. If you've got gas, bloating, autoimmune problems, rashes, just suspect food. FODMAPs foods are basically mushy fruits. Apples, apricots, berries, cherries, mango, pretty much all fruits, actually. Squashes. Fruits that are dried are the worst. Dried fruits are the worst FODMAP foods there is. Juices are close. Fruit juices are close. But, but, but the sugars in these concentrated dried apricots and raisins, it's just a disaster, an utter sugar disaster. Human beings were never, ever, ever intended to eat dried fruit. Dried fruit is as horrible for the intestine as uh, a Snickers bar for, for most people. Products with wheat and rye and barley and rice and even quinoa and spelt can be problems for you guys who are going gluten-free. Oh, I'm just eating quinoa. I'm just eating spelt. I'm eating low gluten grains. It doesn't matter. Buckwheat. Anything that's got this kind of mushy quality to it. Uh, dairy products can be FODMAPs. It can, can uh, contain FODMAPs. Milk contains FODMAPs. Yogurt. Ice cream. Big, ice cream is a big source of FODMAPs. Candy, of course. And then for, uh, don't forget the last part of FODMAPs is polyols. It's FODMAP. For, for, uh, fermentable oligodye monosaccharides and polyols. The P is polyol. Sorbitol is a polyol. Xylitol is a polyol. Mannitol is a polyol. You can tell by the OL at the end of the word. A polyol is a, is a type of sugar that doesn't affect your insulin, so diabetics think they're out of the, out of the woods. They're just eating their sugar-free chocolate or sugar-free whatever, and it's got sorbitol in it, and that can totally rag on the digestive system. Sorbitol is notorious for causing digestive problems. Xylitol can do it too, and, and also mannitol. These are all sweets. They're, these are all sweet sugars. Sorbitol is super sweet, um, and they're used as replacement sweeteners in a lot of diabetic products. But they can mess up the, the bacterial bacteria in the small intestine. They can cause small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And this SIBO is a major cause of heartburn. It's a major cause of acid reflux. It's not just that SIBO can wreak havoc on the health of the entire body. It can also be a cause of relaxation of the sphincter that connects the stomach to the esophagus, the so-called LES, lower esophageal sphincter. A sphincter is like a muscle that opens and closes. When the sphincter gets relaxed, acid can splash back up, especially after you're eating. And also... Uh, pressure from the intestine, from the small, from the bacteria that are overgrowing, they can push up too. Between the pressure pushing up and the looseness of the sphincter, that's where you got your heartburn. That's where you have your GERD. It's not a Nexium issue. It's not a Prilosec issue. Even though these drugs are the best-selling, next to aspirin, they're the best-selling drugs you can get at the at the uh, drugstore. I know. By the way, have you heard about aspirin now? Now they're telling you, oh, aspirin is a cause of bleeding. Maybe we shouldn't take. Maybe we shouldn't be giving elderly folks aspirin. Uh, routinely. Uh, where have you heard that before? We talk about that all the time. There's no drug you could ever take routinely and be better off for it, period. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. we got lines open. 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, just after we read a couple stories here. I want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And also, if you're interested in starting a longevity business, love to have you on the Brightside Ben team. Call 866-735-2470 or... Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, from the Journal of the American Heart Association, common treatment for AFib also lowers anxiety and depression. This is so, so, so important. Quote, levels of anxiety and depression seen in people who have a common heart rhythm disorder called atrial fibrillation or AFib may be affected by how the heart is treated. Past studies have shown 
that anxiety, distress, and depression are common among people with AFib. I've said this for so many years. AFib is a sign of a body in distress and a heart in distress. All arrhythmias are heart in distress. Now, you can say, well, it's the connective tissue. It's the electrical system, blah, 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 blah. The fact of the matter is, is the heart and the body are freaked out. That's what arrhythmias are. The heart and the body are freaked out. Activation of the sympathetic nervous system. So, of course, anxiety and depression are going to be common in people who have AFib. What does a doctor do for you if you have AFib? He kills your heart. I'm not being poetic or metaphorical. I'm being literal. He electrocutes your heart or he poisons it with a drug. That's how doctors treat AFib. Now, who in their right mind, aside from somebody who went to medical school, who's been hypnotized, obviously, because who could ever think that poisoning the heart is good or electrocuting the heart is good to help to calm it down? It's like you have your baby. Yes, you can, you can drug your baby and you won't have to listen to him crying, but that doesn't, nobody thinks that's a good solution. Maybe your doctor, because that's what he's doing. And it's not just the doctor, because guess what? We're complicit too. Pharmacists are complicit and patients are complicit. We all somehow have bought the idea hook, line, and sinker that we can be better off by drugging ourselves. And yes, we rip on the medical model, but it's not fair to just rip on them because there's other people, insurance companies, pharmacists, patients themselves, who are responsible for this madness, this craziness of using poisons to make the body better. So if you have AFib, or if you have any health challenge, but if you have AFib, understand that it's the end result of a body in duress, a body in distress, specifically cells in duress, cells in distress. That's really what it's all about. It's about cells that at some level are not getting fed correctly. They're not getting the nutrients they need. They're not getting oxygenated. They're not getting breathed. They don't have the oxygen they need to create energy and they're swimming in their own filth. Yes, literally they're toxic. That's what it means to be toxic. Cells are swimming in a soup. All cell, you know, cells are kind of suspended in this soupy jelly mass. Do you know cells don't touch each other? Cells are separated. All the 100 trillion cells of the body are separated from each other. They're embedded in this mass, the soupy jelly mass. And uh, it's this soupy jelly mass, which by the way is called connective tissue, that's responsible for feeding and, and sustaining, nourishing and electrifying and detoxifying the cells. But once that mass becomes toxic or starved or there's not oxygen in there, you can't help but get sick. You're going to get sick. If it's your heart that's uh, heart cells, you're going to have uh, arrhythmias. You're going to have artery, to coronary disease. If it's uh, your colon, you're going to have intestinal disease. This is, from, uh, this is from the Technical University of Munich. Colon cancer is caused by bacteria and cell stress. Duh. No kidding. Researchers at Technical University of Munich have reported findings related to the development of colon cancer. We originally wanted to study the role of bacteria in the intestines in the development of inflammation. However, the surprising result for us was the discovery that bacteria together with stress in cells created tumors. Let me say that again. Bacteria together with stress in cells created tumors. It's the stress on the cells that causes cancer. Don't let anybody ever tell you we don't know what causes cancer. And don't let anybody ever tell you that all cancers are different. Well, yeah, they are different, but from a healing perspective, they're not. They're cellular duress. That's what cancer is. That's what all illness is. It's cellular duress. <clears throat> a cell is like a microcosm of a human being. We get duressed, we get stressed, and a cell gets duressed, and a cell gets stressed. What's interesting when it comes to cancer is typically when a cell reaches a certain point of duress and a certain point of stress, it will kill itself. It has a self-destruct mechanism when it is defective. A cancer cell is a cell that has evaded the self-destructive mechanism. It has somehow snuck through the fence, so to speak, the execution chamber. It's kind of interesting how a cancer cell works. A cancer cell is a rogue cell that is somehow the will to survive of it has overridden the it's uh, it, it's altruistic suicide self suicide program. It's kind of altruistic to the organism for a cell to kill itself. You know, nothing wants to die, but a cell will kill itself in service to the organism, in service to us. 
A cancer cell is a cell that has decided it doesn't want to do that. It's like, no, I don't think so. I'm going to try to find another way to live. And what it does is it taps into its immortality. There's an immortality program in the genes, and a cancer cell is a rogue cell that has decided it doesn't want to be sacrificed for the, in the name of the organism, and it's going to continue to perpetuate in this, in this immortal fashion. It's kind of cool in a way. The problem is, is when it perpetuates in this immortal fashion, it doesn't have the ability to, to uh, create little substructures inside of it. It's dividing very rapidly. That's how, that's how it maintains its immortality is by dividing really, really rapidly. It doesn't have a chance to grow and to develop inside. Cells are growing and developing inside. And so you get a dysfunctional cell. But it's kind of interesting how a cancer cell is really a rogue cell. That's the problem with chemotherapy, is you're killing your own cells. Cancer cells are our cells. They're our rogue children that have somehow escaped this suicide program. And the reason chemotherapy is a failure is because you're just killing your own cells. Of course you're going to be miserable when you kill your own cells. Now, do you need radiation sometimes? Do you need chemotherapy? Perhaps. I'm not, I'm not making a statement here, a political statement about chemotherapy. I'm just saying the mechanism has got to wreak havoc on the body because it's killing our own cells. It's killing our cells. And speaking of which, there is a really interesting article that everybody should read who's dealing with cancer, who knows somebody who's dealing with cancer, who has a loved one who has cancer, or who's interested in the subject. This is from the New York Times. I've, I've talked about it before, but it's super, super important for all cancer sufferers to read this. It's published in the New York Times uh, in 2009. Cancer's headline, Cancers Can Vanish Without Treatment, But how? It's according to a paper that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Data from more than two decades of screening for breast and prostate cancer say that cancers can reverse itself. The old view is that cancer is a linear process. That means it goes in one direction. A cell acquired a mutation and little by little became more cancerous. It turns out that the immune system can address cancer cells. We've talked about that before a lot. But get this article. Just Google New York Times, cancers can vanish without treatment. But how? Put it in your file. Save it. Give it to, post it. Share it with everybody you know who has cancer. All right, 844 is our number. Got lines open. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll get your calls when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return after this. Right side, 844-236-6010. Got lots of lines open for you. Let's go to Oklahoma and say good morning to Tara. What's up, Tara? Hi. Hey, how's it going today? It's going good. Um, I've listened to you in the past, and I remember you saying that when you have surgery, it's like a lion um, or a tiger oh, yeah. attacking your body. Good. You like so, that. I'm, I like when people remember yeah, my little metaphors. It is. Yeah, it's like a line. Just, me. Yeah, it makes sense though, right? It's your body doesn't know it's in an operating room. It thinks you a line just ate it. Good for yeah, you. So, <laughs> well, oh, I on? have to have a procedure done that I don't really want to have, but it's okay. inevitable. I have a cracked filling and it's turned into where my tooth has to be removed. Don't mess with your and, teeth. Don't mess with your well, gums and teeth. Have whatever, you don't in think my, I my opinion. Have it. You don't think I should have an implant done? You know, I, uh, I, don't, I can't say whether you should have it or not, but if you have a cracked tooth, you need to, you need to take taken care of for a couple of reasons. First of all, it could be, if, if you ever have any infection in your, tooth, in your gum or in your, in where the tooth is and at the root of the tooth or whatever in the mouth, it, it's beyond the pain and it's just so miserable. It's not worth anything. So well, I, always, I got the pain toler uh, under control. Okay. I've been supplementing. And so when I okay. supplement, I do good. But if okay. I slow down on my supplementing, then That's interesting. The in so you don't yeah, have any infection or part. anything? You don't have any infection well, or anything? I just went to the dentist last week, and she showed me, she did a CT scan, and she said that I do have an abscess. Yeah, um, I, would, I would have that addressed, because if, if it's true. Now, I don't always... You know, you may want a second opinion just because one dentist says something isn't necessarily the case, as with all medical right. professionals. On the other hand, an abscess can get into the blood. It can cause systemic problems. It's just not yeah. worth it, you know. And I've and, had this not, abscess since March because I was pregnant, and I just delivered a baby, so I have a five-week-old now. And that's why I'm calling you because I want to know what you think I should 
you know, your suggestions should be, um, because, you know, I remember you saying that. I would that, say fix your I'm teeth. Terrified. I would say fix okay. your teeth. Fix your teeth. Yeah. You want your teeth perfectly healthy and then take really good care of them afterwards. I mean, you want your teeth perfectly. You sound like you're young. You don't want to have a his, you don't want to have a lifetime history of, uh, of dental problems or of gum problems. It's really, it's, yeah. it could be, and not to mention the stuff can get in your blood. A lot of folks now believe heart disease is at least partially related to bacteria from the mouth that get into the blood. So I wouldn't mess around personally. I'd have, okay. I'd have it done. She's, the dentist is going to do um, PRP and ozone Okay. to, you know, help me recover faster. That's great. Um, Both of them are great. Okay. So Platelet good. rich plasma and ozone for the listeners. Both of them are great treat. I, I, I've seen really good things with both of those. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So the next thing is um, right after I delivered, I got vaginal hematoma. It's my third mm. delivery, my third pregnancy. I've Did never had, had it before. Yeah, you ain't no spring I've... chicken after three babies. How old are you? <laughs> 26. Okay, so and you've had three babies. So, so yeah, so yeah. The, that's the blood vessels breaking down. Uh, it's not unusual when you deliver a baby for that to happen. Um, and the fact that it's your third baby, you know, uh, it may be that you're older it maybe that you're more nutritionally deficient, but it is, it's like a bruise basically is what you're talking about. Um, and yeah, obviously when you deliver a baby awful. that can cause a bruise, <laughs> is it painful? Oh, it was, I'm on week five At week two. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk. How big was your um, baby? She was nine one. Oh, okay. And, Are you a little gal? Um, Are you small yeah, hips? I'm, I'm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to know, like, it's still not completely recovered and I've never had this before. Vi uh, here's what you do for all. That's a great question for all blood vessels that are breaking, whether it's in your face, which can happen in the face or it can happen uh, in, in the chat, in the heart, or in the arteries, in the coronary arteries. Anytime blood vessels break, if you see them visibly or even if you don't see them uh, visibly, aneurysms, for example, vitamin C is the most important thing you could do. High doses of it. Anything that builds connective tissue, the blood vessels are made up of the same connective tissue that's in your face or in your bones. Not exactly the same, but close enough. So building connective tissue using a bone broth protein, using bone broth and chicken broth, chicken bone soup, as I call it, high uronic acid supplements, maybe two, 300 milligrams a day, silica gel, anything that you could take for arthritis will help you heal from a hematoma. So yeah, glucogel caps, anything that helps you, our, our collagen recovery complex at truthtreatments.com. Does that make sense? Okay. Got it. All right. Good. Congratulations too, by Thank the way. Thank you right. so much. Have a, have a great day, Tara. All right. Let's go to Carol in New York. Good morning, Carol. What's up? Good morning, Ben. How are you? I'm doing good. What's going on? Um, thanks for taking my call. I'm sure. interested in going on organic soy lecithin for a supplement, okay. but I don't seem to be able to find any out there. Go with, uh, why do you want, is there a reason why you want the soy? Um, well, I was listening to what you were saying on um, Coast to Coast just this week. Okay. About now, it I like the health benefits, and I, I like do not have my lesson. gallbladder. I haven't had it in um, about 35 years. Okay, well, you definitely and, want to be on lecithin, uh, but I would do the I would do um, sunflower lecithin. Okay. I don't, I'm not crazy about soy. Yeah, do sunflower lecithin, and you could get organic sunflower lecithin right off the internet, right off Amazon. Oh, okay. I didn't realize yeah. that there was sunflower you know, lecithin. Yep, there's sunflower lecithin. Soy, you know, there's some problems with soy. Now, if you are going to go soy, uh, you want to go non-GMO, of course, and organic if you can find organic. I, I'm pretty sure there's organic soy lecithin too. I personally, I use organic sunflower lecithin and I like the, uh, I like the, uh, oil better than, the than the granules, but it's, it's kind of just a matter of taste. The oil, the oil's a little oil more readily absorbed or, uh, the oil's not straight lecithin. It's got some other things in it. Uh, you know, it's six of one half dozen of the other. I, I don't really have an opinion on which one you use. You have to kind of experiment a little bit. The powder is a little okay. bit easier, more convenient to use though. Okay. Okay. Thank and you know you what? Eggs much. are a great so eggs are a great source of lecithin too. Just as an aside, I didn't get to say that on the on the program on the uh, on coast to coast. Eggs are a great source of lecithin. So and if you hard boiled are okay too. Mm, you probably don't want to hard boil them too much. You know, maybe once in a while they're convenient to hard boil, but poaching and soft boiling and raw are the best ways to do your eggs. Uh, hard boiling, you start to change the proteins around. It, it's still better than most snacks, but. Uh, no, that's not the best way to do your eggs. 
It, hard boil okay. is not the best way to do your eggs. Um, always mix a little bit of oil with your eggs, though, too. Coconut oil or something like that. Uh, because of um, a lot of the nutrients that are in eggs are fat-soluble. You'll help your body absorb a lot of those nutrients. And then don't forget about your ultimate enzymes for if you don't have a gallbladder. You should, you should be doing your ultimate enzymes every day, and you should be doing apple cider vinegar every day. Are you doing longevity products? How did you hear about Coast? I am. I'm on longevity for yeah. over two years now. And awesome. I, um, How would you find out about longevity? Was it Coast to Coast? Yes, it was Coast to Coast. So you heard it on Coast to Coast. You decided to try it, and it's been two years. Yes, and what a difference. Um, Isn't that because I have a medical condition, and it has really helped me regain a lot of lost energy. I, you know, I, every once in a while, we'll get a letter from somebody who thinks that it's all just kind of scammy and pushing product on people. But I, it's, there's so many people that benefit from this stuff. So many people. Oh, I absolutely. Get, most, My husband, too, he's on it now, too. Good for you. Well, cool. Where in New York do you live? Newburgh. Is that near uh, New Paul's? Where's that, up, upstate? It's not far from New Paltz. Yeah, yeah it's think, uh, about 60, 65 miles north of New York City. Are you still having wintertime? Right in the heart of the Hudson Valley region. Is, win is wintertime over? Or I mean, did wintertime start, I should say? <laughs> not yet. It's still too it's pretty, humid and hot for me. <laughs> uh, okay. I used to live in Syracuse. That was pretty miserable, I have to tell you. Oh, man. That's the yeah. snow capital of the world. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. It was pretty awful. But it's well, probably, I'm from probably... Buffalo originally, so not far Buffalo's from worse. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buffalo's worse. All right, good. Well, I hope we helped you out. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. How'd you hear about The Bright Side from Coast to Coast? Um, no, I uh, called uh, my rep at Longevity, Emma is her name, okay. and I asked her about the lecithin, and she provided me with a link, the, and on the link about lecithin is protective of your site there on um pharmacistben.com, I saw the radio show off on the side, and oh, I said, well, so you're I'm going to call list. and ask him. Okay, so you're a new, you haven't listened before. It's the first time. Yes, this is the first time. Oh, good. Well, I hope you become a regular listener. Thank you so much. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I didn't know that you were doing this for an hour every day, Monday through Friday. An hour a day. And there's also archives at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. We've got search engine if you want to search various subjects. And we also have uh, all awesome. six, seven years of archives. Seven years? Yes, yeah, seven I years of Can I ask you one parting question? Real quick, because we're out of time, but go ahead. Okay. Cataracts. I have cataracts, and I'm severely myopic. Cataracts are, are your lens, your windshield breaking down. That, your lens is your windshield. It breaks down. It forms cracks. You can't, you can't repair the cracks. They're cracks. You want to prevent cataracts. Not, you can't really reverse them. So hopefully you don't need no. surgery because the surgery, they'll, they'll make it sound like the surgery is routine. There's no routine surgeries. Uh, so you want to avoid that if possible. If not, you have to do what you got to do. But make sure you're doing all your supplements when you peel from your surgery. This is so important, especially for the eyes. Carol, call back uh, on our next show because we got to go. And thanks for listening. Okay, thank Appreciate you. It. Okay, I hope we helped you out. Thanks so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, CriticalHealthNews.com for all the longevity products, truth skin, uh, truth treatments.com for all our truth skin health products. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, beautiful, wonderful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.